Welcome back to Operations Management. In this session, we're going to talk about process analysis, and I'm going to introduce you to the concept of Little's Law. Up until this time, we've been thinking theoretically about processes, and we've talked about why we need to study a process and the importance of relating our operational strategies to our organizational strategies and so forth. But now we need to start looking at processes in detail, and that's what we're going to start now. We study operations management from a process view because when we look down into an organization, it is a series of interconnected events. From the moment an order is received to the time that it goes out to the customer, we just have one big long process that when we look down into it is actually a series of interconnected smaller processes, activities, tasks, buffers. Now in order for us to improve on that process, we need to look at it. We need to take a, a look at it from the moment that order is received and start looking at what can we do to shorten how shorten the amount of time it takes to complete the unit, shorten the amount of time it takes to get to the customer. How can we make it less costly? How can we make it higher quality? We can't figure that out unless we understand the process itself. So what we need to do is we need to look at every step in that process and try and remove things that don't need to be there. Things that don't need to be there are considered what we call non-value added. When things have to wait, that's non-value added. When we have additional steps that don't need to happen, that's also non-value added. So when we look at that process view, we're carefully analyzing every step in that process and trying to get rid of things that don't add value. When we analyze a process, we need it to be considered what we call stable. A stable process says the units that come in on average, the rate of flow coming in equals the rate of flow going out. Okay? That's average inflow equaling average outflow. We all know that averages are not actually what is happening on moment to moment basis. We also know that when you flip a coin, on average, you're going to get 50% heads, 50% tails, but on an individual coin flip or three in a row or four in a row, you're not going to get 50% heads, 50% tails. But we can't study a process on individual transactions. We can only study a process using averages. So we know that fluctuations happen all the time, but we're going to be looking at a process by averages. We need to look at three particular operational measures. One is flow time. We characterize that by the variable t, t for time, and it indicates how long does it take to get through the process. Okay, so flow time, how long it takes to get through the process. We have inventory. Inventory are how many units are in the process at any given time. Again, we're looking at averages. So if we were to take a snapshot and say on average, how many units are in the process, that's I for inventory. Our throughput rate, what is processing in and out of the process at any given time. That's our throughput rate. How many are coming in and going out? Rate R. Now these three variables, these three operational measures can be connected and that is Little's Law. Little's Law connects the three. We take our average inventory, and if you look inside the box there, that's the units that are sitting inside the process, equals our average throughput rate, that's the flow rate of items going through the process, units per hour, or units per minute, or units per second, and we multiply that by our average flow time, the length of time it takes for an average unit to get through the process itself. So Little's Law says, Average inventory equals average throughput rate times average flow time. I equals R times T. 
It's very, very powerful because as long as we know the values of two of these variables, we can always calculate the third. So let's just do a very simple example. A toy manufacturer has a throughput rate of 30 toys per hour and it takes a half an hour for a toy to go through the process. How many toys on average are in the process? Pause the video and take a moment to solve it. The key here is to look at the problem and identify the values for the individual variables. If you notice, we said that the throughput rate was 30 toys per hour. So that becomes your variable R. The length of time in the process was a half hour. That's our flow time, so that becomes T. So to calculate the inventory, we use Little's law of I equals R times T, which equals 30 toys per hour times the half an hour equals 15 toys. That's all it takes to do Little's law is understanding the relationship of I equals R times T. Next time, we're going to go and do some more complicated problems using Little's Law. I'll see you then.